What's up guys, welcome to Poor Man Mods. Today we're gonna to be installing this bushing in my ISF. This is a polyurethane bushing from Super Pro that I got from Figs. This is not sponsored at all, but this is a polyurethane bushing that replaces the rear bushing on the lower control arm. Now, if you do any upgrades to your ISF, IS250, IS350, this is probably one of the things that you should do. The factory bushing is really sloppy and it's filled with like an oil, so it's super loose and it causes a lot of inner tire wear. And upgrading the bushing really improves the handling of the car. There's two ways you can get this. Um, you can get this bushing just from Figs or Super Pro, and then Figs sells this bushing pressed into a built aluminum mount so you don't have to do the extra work of pressing the old bushing out and pressing this one in. Since this is poor man mods, obviously we went the cheaper route because I think this is 160 for the pair of these bushings. And I want to say it's almost double if you get these pressed into a new mount. So of course we went the cheaper way and today we're going to show you on my 2008 ISF on how to remove that lower control arm, get the bushing out, and put this one in. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is get the car in the air and then take off the brake caliper and the brake rotor. We're working on the driver's side now. We're gonna turn the steering wheel all the way to the right. This will give us some articulation to get the one lower control arm bolt out and also make getting to this stuff a little bit easier. Then you're gonna use a 17 millimeter socket and a 19 millimeter wrench to remove the bolt on the bottom of the shock. Then take a 19 millimeter socket and remove the two bolts that hold the ball joint to the knuckle right here. Then we're going to remove the cotter pin that connects the ball joint to the lower control arm and then remove the nut. And then obviously remove the ball joint from the control arm. All right, so I finally got the ball joint out. I did put another nut on this stud here and hammered it out, and it was so seized, even with soaking it with lubricant, I uh, messed up the thread, so I will need to replace this ball joint now, uh, but whatever, I guess. But now that this is out, this gives you articulation back here, back here to get one of the bolts out for the lower control arm. Now we will remove the nut and bolt on the front of the control arm. You'll need a 19 millimeter socket and wrench for this. And once you get the nut off, you will need to hammer the bolt out. But just be careful when pushing it forward that you don't pop it out with such force it gets lost on the belly tray. That happened to me on the other side. Then we're going to use a 22 millimeter socket to remove the nut that holds the bushing onto the control arm. Then use that same socket to remove the larger bolt securing the bracket to the chassis. To remove the bracket that holds onto the bushing, there's two 14 millimeter bolts that need to be removed. Then the last thing securing the bushing to the car is a 17 millimeter bolt. Now be careful with this, there is a nut on top, and if you're not careful, you will drop it and it'll get lost somewhere. It happened to me on the other side, so just make sure you get a hold of it and don't lose it. And now it can be removed. All right, got the bushing and bracket out of the car. Now we need to get the bushing out of the bracket without damaging the bracket. Here is our new bushing from Super Pro, and this can only go in one way. If you notice here, the sleeve right here is flat, just like it is right here. But the other side has a little cone on it, and so does this one. This little cone is gonna go towards the control arm. And what I did, just so I didn't get anything mixed up, I put a red dot right here, red dot here, and red dot here. So now, when I get this pressed out and go to press the new one in, I just get the red on the same side and this should be all good to go. So to press this out, um, I'm sure there might be a special tool out there somewhere that's the perfect size, but what I found that's really, really, really close, I believe this is a two inch pipe coupler and it fits pretty freaking good right on top of that bushing. Now, when I tried to press this out, when I tried to press this out using my 20 ton press, this got it pretty much flush with the bracket and it wouldn't go anymore at all. And what I needed to do was to burn oh, was to burn the bushing, make a relief cut in the sleeve, bang in the sides, and then I was able to press out again. I might have to resort to that in this video. You might have a different experience than I will. Um, and part of the problem was this is just so close to the right size, it was kind of getting lopsided and it wasn't pressing it perfectly. So what I think I'm going to try here 
is first I'm going to try to soak it with a penetrant lubricant and then I'm going to bash the sides in as far as I can and then I'm going to try to press it and see if I have any luck. If I get stuck again then I will burn it, make a relief cut and press it out again. So I'm going to try not to burn it this time but we'll see what happens. Alright, let's take it to the press and see if that helped me at all. But we'll try this flat piece, see if we can press it out to at least get flush with the bracket, and then we'll use this. But this is. Alright, it's pretty much flush, so now we'll drop this and use my pipe coupler and see if we can press it out or see if we have to cut it and, you know, mutilize it. There we go. Okay, now you want to make sure that the bracket is clean of burrs and nice and smooth. Lube it up with the supplied grease along with the bushing. This will make sure that it slides in real good. And to press this in, I'm using a piece of 3 inch exhaust tubing with some washers and a piece of steel that I cut. This will make sure that it presses evenly on the sleeve and the bushing and it doesn't distort the sleeve or cause any damage to the bushing itself. There might be a better way to do this, but this is the solution that I came up with to press it in safely. And with this, you basically press it in until it's completely flush. There's nothing sticking out on either side. Just like that. All right, so this is the second time I'm filming this close because I lost audio the first time and I don't know why. But anyway, that's how you press the new bushing into the bracket and get the old bushing out of the car. I don't think I need to show you how to reinstall everything. It's the same process as removal. Um, so now that I have this new ball joint, I'm gonna go put the car back together. Advance Auto wanted like $120 for this ball joint and I got it off Rock Auto for like 38, so. Yeah, rock auto. No sponsorship there at all, although I wish they did. Um, but I did break the factory ball joint. I got the threads off just because I was hitting it so hard it wouldn't come apart. Um, but, you know, it is 12 years old, whatever, so a new ball joint isn't going to hurt. It's not going to break the bank either. So I'm going to get this car back together, and that, guys, is how you install that bushing. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope maybe you learned something, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm.